Hi, I'm Priscilla, and today I'm going to be reading the Lorax. At the far end of town, where the griggle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the griggle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today. Where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? Far from the end of town where the wriggle grass grows, the old one still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the onesler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks. And he tells you how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of the rope, he lets down a tin pal. And you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail. And the shell of the great 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 grandfather snail then he pulls up the pal makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount then he hides what you paid him away in a snub his secret strange hole in his gravelous glove then he grunts i will call you by Whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slip down the slips to whisper my phone to your ear, and the old one slur whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a snurgly hose and he asks um and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose now i'll tell you he says with his teeth sounding gray how the lorax got lifted and taken away it all started way back such a long long time back Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean. And the song of the swung me swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees. Mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate the truffle fruits. From the Rapunzel's pond, came the comfortable sound uh, of the humming fish humming while splashing around.
But those trees, those trees, those truffle trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had the sweet smell of fresh buttery butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of heart of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop, and then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill, and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuff and kneaded it to a feed. The instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump. Of the tree I chopped down, it was a short sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lord. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you made out of my truffle tuff? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I just chopped down one tree. I'm doing no harm. I am being quite useful. This thing is a need. A need, a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can see. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, or for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's knee. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap, a chap came along. And he thought that the need I knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here are a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to the north niche, turn left at Weehawk and Sharp right at South And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wansler family was working full tilt. We were all needing things just as busy as bees to the sound of chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree 
at the time was too slow. So I quickly invented Super Axe Hacker, which whacked off four truckle trees at one smacker. You were making for me four times as fast before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown bar balloons who played in the shade in their bar balloon suits and happily lived eating truffle fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, uh, there is not enough truffle fruit to go around. And my poor bar balloons are getting the crummies because... They have gas and no food in their tummy. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. So I have to find food and hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the ones who have felt sad. As I watch them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies in their tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger and bigger. I got. I bigger. I biggered my. Factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the things I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went on biggering, selling more things, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more grime. I'm the Lorax, he coughed and he would. Oh, he would. He sneezed and snuffled. He snarled, he sniffed. Once, Lur, he cried with cruelish cruel. Once, Lur, you're making such a smuggle smoke. My poor Somni swans. Why they can't sing a note. No one uh, can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape the smog you've smogged up around here. What? Mm, once more, it's not the Lorax. His danger was up. Let me say a few words about the Gullibity Glut. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gloopity glub and so loppity slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, dirty old winter men. You're glummy. You're grumbling the pond uh, where the humming fish hum. No more can they hum before their gills are all glummed. So I'm sending them off. Their future is dreary. dreary. They'll walk off on their own fence and woefully wet in search of some water that isn't so smooth.
And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap yap and say bad 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, Lorax, I'm figuring on figuring on figuring and figuring and figuring. Turning more trail full of trees into trees, which everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the field came a sickening smack on the axe of a tree. Then we heard the tree fall. That, the very last truffle tree of them all. No more trees, no more things, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles, aunts, aunts, and everyone all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke, smoke stars. Now all I, that was left near the bad smelling sky was a big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, he just gave me a glance, he just gave me a very sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his hand and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hesitated himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whenever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess, but that was a long, long ago. But every, each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all my heart. But now, the one sir says, now that you're here, that word of the Lorax seems pretty perfectly familiar. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better, it's not. So, catch, calls the one sir. He lets something fall. It's a truffle lusty. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle seeds. And the truffle trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then Lorax and all of his friends may come back.